Hello, this is Eric Thomas on behalf of ODOT's Office of CAD and Mapping Services. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some changes that have been made to the design file names. The January 2015 update to ODOT's CAD standards includes quite a few changes, and these CAD standards are intended for MicroStation and Geopack Select Series 3 and beyond. So existing projects that you have currently under development using ODOT's V8i standard CAD standards should be finished using the previously published standards. These standards should be used for new projects and moving forward. And one of the changes is the design file names themselves. ODOT is going to insert an underscore character between the PID number and the two character file type. And this is being done to improve readability. So I have a couple of examples here. So using a PID number of 12345 and then an underscore and then the two character code for a base map existing and it's the first file of that type. And the second example is a base map proposed. Now with this change, the ODOT Files MicroStation Visual Basic application has been updated. So the update includes support for the new folder structure, and I talked about the folder structure in another video, and support for the file name changes. And in addition to that, we've added the ability to create multiple files or multiple sheet models within a file. So when you're creating a specific file type, there's now a key in field where you can say, hey, I need two or three files for this type, or I need two or three models within this file. Now these changes are not backwards compatible with existing project folder structures or existing file names. So again, this is to be used for new projects and moving forward. So let's go ahead and get in MicroStation and take a look at the changes to the program. Okay, I have a MicroStation file open and I'm going to go ahead and access the ODOT files application. So from the ODOT pull down menu under file management, I'll choose create design files. Now the application does open with a splash screen and this is just to let you know that the file names and the folder structure here are not compatible with the previous ODOT V8 iCAD standards. So it's just some information for you, just a reminder that this is to be used on new projects moving forward. So I'll go ahead and OK that and then the main dialog for the program opens. Now the dialog has some minor restructuring at the top. Uh, the first item is the parent folder and I can see it's defaulting to the correct folder for my project. So I opened the MicroStation using a MicroStation project configuration file and one of the variables that's defined in there is the uStation project data variable and that defines the root folder for this project. So that's already been defined according to my current PCF file. If I needed to browse for a different location, I can just use the browse button here. And the program is looking for the design folder. So everything from the design folder down is where all the CAD files are stored. Now, by default, the program will open with no seed file selected. So I'll use the browse button to choose a seed file. And I can see that it's defaulting to the standards seed folder for the project. And I have two different seed files there. And I'll use the 2D seed file for this and go ahead and open that. Now the PID number is listed and this is just read from the MicroStation PCF file. So there's a variable that defines the PID number for the project. If that variable is not defined, the program will prompt you to enter the PID number. So I'm ready to create files for the project and the category is defaulting to base map design files. And below that I have a list of all the base map file types and any files that have been previously created. So I can see that it's found in the survey folder under base maps, a survey file that's already been created and under the geometry or geopack folder, base maps, a geometry file that's been created. So if I'm gonna add additional files, I can just type on the file type and to the right of that, I have an option that's new for the number of files of this specific type. So I can see there's an option button here for files and models. And when I'm working with base maps, uh, models is not available. So I can only create multiple files when I'm working with base maps. When I'm working with sheets, I can create multiple sheet models within the sheet design file. And I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm going to create a drainage base map and I'm just going to create one of those file types and the default comment is listed above and then that comment is propagated throughout all the different file types. So if I change it here, it'll change for all of them or I can individually change one here. Now maybe this is going to be the base map for the proposed drainage. To the right of that, I have the annotation scale. And as I check on items, the annotation scale is propagated in there. 
and uh, I can change that at the top for the default value or I can change it individually on a file once I turn that file type on. So for some reason that needed to be 100 scale, I could change that. And again, that's just setting the default annotation scale value in the file when it's created. So if for some reason I knew that I needed two different base maps for the environmental file, I could change it here to two and it will create two files as it processes. Now I want to mention the folders that are present for this project. I didn't create a lot of the discipline specific folders. So everything's going to default to the roadway folder with exception of the survey files and the geopack geometry base map. So the landscaping, lighting, maintenance of traffic, right of way, signals, traffic control utilities, all these different file types. Um, when I create the folder structure itself, I could have created different discipline specific folders to house those files. And I did not elect to do that with this particular project. So all these file types will default to the roadway folder if there is not a discipline specific folder defined. Now, one other option I should mention is the all on checkbox. I can check that to turn on all the file types and create all of them or turn them back off. So let's just go ahead and create a drainage file and an environmental file and we'll tell it there's two of those. I'll click create files and the process is started and it's going to um, flip through the different microstation files as it creates them, set some settings in those files like the annotation scale, etc. And when it's done, I get processing complete. It does open the models dialog as part of the process because it sets some model properties. So you may want to close that dialog if the program leaves it open. So now that it's done processing, I can see under my drainage base map, it created the first file. And if I were to click drainage on to create another one, it will increment to create the second one. And under the environmental file, since I created two of those, I can see there's now two in the folder and it would create the third one if I check that on to create another one. So that's a look at creating base map files. Let's take a look at creating some sheet files. So I'll go back up to the category menu and I can see the different options for different types of sheets. So let's just go ahead and use drainage sheets for an example. So with the drainage sheet files, I'm going to go ahead and check on all on and create all the different file types. And I'll change my default comment here to state route one, two, three proposed drainage. Now for each of the sheet types, I have an option again to create multiple files or multiple models. And this is global across all file types. So I cannot create multiple files for one type and multiple models for another. So I'm going to go ahead and change the option to create multiple models. And I have the key and field for how many models. So let's say I know I'm going to have three pages of notes. So I'll change that to three pages and that will create three sheet models within that one design file. So I can change that for each of the different file types where I know I may have uh, multiple pages. So I'll just leave it at those two, the notes and the sub summary. Now plan and profile, since I would clip that with GeoPack, I would only create one model in a plan and profile sheet. GeoPack will clip the plan and profile sheets and put each one in its own file. So there's no reason to create multiple models for something that you're going to use GeoPack clipping. Okay, uh, one of the other things that's been expanded is the available cells. So if I look at the drop down list of cells, some of these are pretty limited. They only have one cell that applies, but some of them have multiple cell options. So let's find one that has more options. It's my drainage sub summary. So it's defaulting to the drainage sub summary sheet, but I've also added options here to include the auto table based sheets or the different summary types. So you'll notice if you're used to using this and placing cells with it, that you'll see some different options in the drop downs and more cell types are supported for each different file type. So I'm just going to go ahead and place a cell in each of these and I'll just choose one. And in my cross section sheet, I'll change the annotation scale to five. And maybe I know my schematic is going to be at a 500 scale. So with those options checked on, I'm going to go ahead and run the create files application. Oops, I need my seed file. I had closed the dialog and reopened. So let's get the seed file. And now go ahead and create the files.
Okay, the processing is complete and it took about 30 seconds to create those files. So I'll just go ahead and OK this and close the models dialog. So let's take a look at our notes file that we created with multiple models and just take a look at how the models are named. So I'll just open that file under roadway sheets and the drainage notes. And I'll choose the models option and I can see there are three sheet models in the file. And the first one is just named sheet. So in ODOT's seed files, the default name for a sheet model is sheet. And then any other models you have the program create are incremented. So it's named sheet two and sheet three. And in each of those models, if I open the model, uh, I'll see that I do have a sheet border within each of them. Okay, I have switched projects and this particular project has a folder structure where I created all of the available discipline specific subfolders. So you can see I have subfolders for drainage, landscaping, lighting, MOT, etc. So when I choose an individual sheet type, it will default to the subfolder for that particular type. And I wanted to demonstrate this because you'll notice in this mode, when I've got a structures folder, the option to create bridge and wall files is not in the pull down list for the categories. So when I'm using a separate structures folder for individual structures and bridges, what you need to do is browse to select that particular folder in order to create files. So I'll choose the parent folder option and under the design folder for the project, I can scroll down and I see that I do have a structures folder and I have a folder there for a bridge and a folder there for a wall. So I'll pick the master folder for the bridge and OK that. And now the category just has two options, one for bridge base maps and one for bridge sheets. So these are going to go into that particular structures folder itself. And the same thing is true if I choose the structures folder for the wall. Now within that particular folder, I can create the different files for a wall. So I just wanted to mention that the design specific folder and the various subfolders for the disciplines that the program interactively searches for those. And if it does not find them, once again, everything defaults to the roadway folder. So with that, I'll bring this video to a close. If you have any questions on the program itself, feel free to contact ODOT's Office of CAD and Mapping Services using the contact form on the website.